Hello again and welcome everyone. We're going to give this another shot. Every single thing that you could possibly think of in life, literally whatever it is that you're interested or whatever you're looking for, if you can dream it, Microsoft probably has it somewhere, somehow. Hi, my name is Bobby Ackenborough. I'm, I'm a PM here at Microsoft. I work specifically on Microsoft Stream and all things video. Prior to Microsoft Stream, the only way most companies were doing things were uploading their videos and making them private, right? Now they have their own enterprise video streaming platform for each individual company, and we're able to make it easier for CEOs and top level execs to talk to all the different employees across the company. You work with the stakeholders, you work with the business team, you work with the developers, and you make sure all those pieces tie together to make sure when you deliver something, it's exactly what the people are asking for and not just what you thought they meant. I think the most exciting thing about being a program manager at Microsoft is the opportunity to truly affect people all across this planet. It doesn't matter really what product you're working on. If it's leaving the four walls of Microsoft, it's going to impact at least millions of people. Teams that I've worked for at this company are super supportive of anything that you want to do. My team is okay that I'm gone every once in a while for diversity recruiting, or they're okay that I'm gone every once in a while for a conference to learn and better myself. Microsoft supports you in developing yourself as an individual because they understand if as an individual you're developed, you'll end up only helping and bettering the company. As a matter of fact, um, currently I'm in school um, and Microsoft pays for that, right? For me personally, I DJ both in Seattle and across the country on weekends. Because I was able to share those different things with my manager and my teammates, now I'm DJing for events within the company and my teammates are hiring me for their events. I wholeheartedly believe I'm making an impact in people's lives. Being able to go out to different campuses and talk to students and give them the opportunity to work at a company like Microsoft, there's not too many feelings in this world that make you feel better than that. Awesome. Welcome everyone. Um, welcome to our conversation about the program manager opportunity here at Microsoft. Thank you for taking the time to join. So uh, we are going to touch on a variety of topics today to help you understand what it's like to be a program manager at Microsoft, what it means to be a program manager at Microsoft, you know, so a day in the life. We have five brilliant presenters here with us tonight or this afternoon, and uh, they're going to tell you about their, their journey, uh, what goes on within their world. Um, and the cool thing about it is they come from a variety of backgrounds. Um, they work in different organizations and, uh, you know, really it's going to be an opportunity for you guys to hear from five different folks to get five different perspectives to help you understand, you know, just how diverse these roles and these opportunities really are. So again, thank you for joining us today and looking forward to the discussion. We're going to go ahead and kick it off and hand it off to Srinu. Hi, everyone. I'm a program manager on Microsoft Intune. I started about six months ago, so a very recent hire, um, and I went to Georgia Tech to go Jackets. Um, so I work on Microsoft Intune, and this is a software, and we build device and app management software for IT departments. So this is more on the enterprise side of Microsoft. Um, and I work specifically on the Android mobility team. So looking at Android devices and how we can best manage those for different companies in their IT departments. So looking at a day in the life, for me, because I just started, I'm spending a lot of time learning. So I'm learning from my PM peers, I'm learning from devs, I'm in customer calls. Um, I'm also diving into my projects, which include a lot of spec writing. Um, and I'll kind of get into what a spec is a little bit later. Um, but yeah, lots of learning, lots of interacting with people. It's definitely been an interesting onboarding experience being completely virtual. Um, it, it definitely helped to have a really, really accepting and wonderful team who's been willing to have one on ones with me and and help teach me everything I need to know. And then kind of building off of that, my purpose at Microsoft right now is to just learn everything I can, whether it's my product, the culture, learn more about the people kind of what a PM does and become a better PM. It's kind of just my goal right now. And a little fun fact about me, I was in the 0.05% of Taylor Swift listeners on Spotify Wrapped last year. So a big Swifty over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey to Microsoft. It was definitely an unconventional route that I took. Um, so in high school, I actually grew up in the Seattle area, so pretty familiar with Microsoft and the products and the culture and how it's impacted this area. 
but I was kind of adamant that I wasn't going to go into tech, especially in high school. I, I figured, OK, I'm going to do humanities or, or biology, be a doctor, or maybe go down the history route. I don't know, but it's not going to be tech. That was kind of what my my opinion was. Mm -hmm. um, and applying to college is was, was kind of random. I selected biomedical engineering, not really knowing what that meant or why. I just saw something bio related and I saw engineering and I was like, OK, I guess I like math and science. Let me let me just apply and see what happens. Um, ended up going to Georgia Tech um, and I entered on the pre-med track. Um, so I figured I was going to become a doctor or do something in healthcare. Um, I have a blood phobia, so that wasn't going to work out. I scratched the pre-med um, and then thought, OK, maybe maybe I'll take this engineering degree and go into law. Maybe I'll be a patent lawyer because that aligns well with engineering. Then I realized just reading all day and wasn't really my thing. Um, I wanted something more fast paced, more interactive, more um, something where I could think, think a lot, th work with products, something like that. So I was like, OK, let me try industry within biomedical engineering. So I interned at a medical device company in Florida um, and I realized it's really interesting how the processes working with the FDA versus something in tech kind of works, moves really quickly. We're, we're working on shipping things as fast as we can, as long as they're produced with quality and they're secure. Whereas a medical device company, you're working with a lot of different government entities to get something um, out there. And I realized it just wasn't as exciting of an industry that I wanted to be in. I was definitely impacting people, but it just, it just wasn't for me. Um, and so kind of how I got into this PM role was I was at the Georgia Tech Career Fair and I just walked right up to the Microsoft booth. I saw a huge line of people, um, of course, and I figured, OK, everybody in that line is a CS major. There's no way they're going to take one look at me. I'm a biomedical engineering student. Like, what can I offer Microsoft? Like, they're not going to ask me to design a healthcare product, are they? Um, but I really wanted a chance. And so I walked up there and I said, to the recruiter, I remember he was holding his, I think his his surface and he was just like writing notes as I was talking. I was like, hi, like I'm from the Seattle area. I'm super yeah. familiar with Microsoft and it, the culture and I love designing products. I do this in the biomedical space, but I'm super interested in software and learning more about what a PM does. Um, like, is there any way I can have an interview? Because I'd love to show you what I have. Um, and they gave me an interview and I remember going home and, and crying to my parents being like, oh my gosh, how did this even happen? Like, why are they even looking at me? Um, and then from there I interviewed. Um, I'll talk through a little bit of like the prep that I did for my interview and everything, but I got an internship. Oh, can you go back one slide real quick? I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got my internship, the first one in uh, Redmond on the identity team. And that was just the most amazing experience I've ever had. Um, I think being in Redmond, it's a little bit hard because we're virtual now. You get to interact with so many people and you'll realize how huge Microsoft is. It's it's literally a campus. There are hundreds of buildings and tons of different teams, and it, it's, it's a really, really cool place to be. Um, but because I had grown up in the Washington area, I was kind of hoping to get away maybe from my parents, from my siblings and, and try something new. So I re-interviewed for a different team over in Cambridge near Boston. Um, and I was able to intern the next summer on the Intune team. Um, and that was just an incredible experience as well. I think working at a smaller office was a different experience than working in like a very big campus. Um, and I really liked that. And the thing I loved the most about that was our PM team had so many women on it. I had I was just so impressed. They were all new hires and they were so passionate, so smart, so enthusiastic. It was just an amazing environment for me. Um, so I accepted a full time role um, there and that's kind of where I'm working now for the past six months. So this is a question that I get asked a lot. Um, do PMs need to code? And I think it's an interesting question, especially given my background. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this. I took one coding class in college and it was MATLAB, so not super applicable to my to, to what you think of when you think of tech. Um, but coding is actually not a requirement for the PM role. There's no expectation that I will ever need to code in my role. It definitely helps with communicating with engineers and being able to speak their language. But what I've learned is that it's something that you can definitely learn and you will be surprised how many PMs already at Microsoft don't have a coding background. Um, I, I think my manager 
right now didn't come from a coding background. My skip manager didn't come from a coding background. I think he was an English major. Um, and so as long as you have a willingness to learn um, and you just you immerse yourself in this environment and just draw and absorb from different people, I think that is more important than having the ability to code or coming from a CS background. Um, there is an expectation, though, that this is a technical role. You are in the engineering department at Microsoft. Um, you should be willing to learn about your product and the customer. Um, we're very, very customer driven, so making sure that you can understand what your customer really needs and, and not just what we as PMs and designers think that other people need, but really listening to what, what customers are asking for. Um, being willing to design and put together specs. Um, and a, a spec is basically, um, it's either a document or a PowerPoint deck uh, with kind of the, the different UI screens of what you're building or the different feature requirements, just for anybody who doesn't know that. Um, and then also communicating effectively um, with your engineers, with your customers, with other PMs, just being willing to immerse yourself and be kind of um, in the middle of, of everything that's going on around a feature. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about my intern experience. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have either interned at Microsoft or looking to intern at Microsoft. I would 100% recommend um, interning. I think for, for a couple of reasons. Interning is a great way for you to learn about Microsoft culture, about what the PM role actually is, um, and get a, an idea of what the projects are like. But also, I think you meet so many cool people you have this little intern card kind of when you when you join Microsoft where you could really ask almost anybody for a one on one meeting and they will say yes because you're an intern and we want to keep you here. Um, so I played my intern card a lot. I got to meet with so many cool people um, and just learn so much from everybody in different different industries and different teams. It was just it was super cool. Um, the other thing is the projects. Obviously, you're joining because you want to work with Microsoft and you want to learn. Um, so in my two experiences, I've had two projects at each internship. One of them was more of a spec writing, putting together mocks and developing a feature type of project. And the other one was a more open ended. Hey, we have this scenario. How would you address it? Um, and I think that what Microsoft really loves is we love young people who have really, really fresh mindsets and ways of thinking. Um, and so oftentimes we'll get a really cool often complicated question that I remember being surprised, like, why are they asking me this? Like, I'm an intern. Don't they have other people who probably know this more than I would? But they want your your fresh set of eyes and they're willing to give you really impactful projects. And I really loved that. And then I think lastly, some interview tips. Um, so this is more catered to those of you out there who maybe you're engineering or maybe you're in business or maybe you're in science and, and you really want to try being a PM. This is kind of what I did um, to get this role. And all of you who are who are CS majors, this is super helpful for you too. Um, you've probably heard of Cracking the PM Interview, um, but it's an amazing book. Um, I think the same lady who wrote Cracking the Coding Interview wrote this book. And oh my gosh, it's such a thorough book. It goes through the PM role at different companies, then it goes into um, like the day to day, what a PM does, how to prep your resume, and then the different kinds of questions that you're going to get. And they have like worked out examples of all these questions. So I would highly recommend going through that book, like really use it as like your your study book and put a lot of time into that. And not only putting in time into that, but grab your friends and family and ask them to ask you those questions and get your whiteboard and and just whiteboard it out. Um, this is something I will definitely recommend to everybody to do. If you have an interview, either have a piece of paper or a whiteboard and show your thought process on that. Um, that's super important. Um, the other thing I would say is structure your thoughts. Um, as a PM, we're looking for people who can think logically, but also explain to others how they're thinking, how they get from point A to point B. Um, so if you're looking at like a, a design a product question, then maybe looking at a certain analysis you could use, maybe a SWOT analysis where you go through the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, or maybe a flow chart. Or if you're doing an estimation question, talk through the formula before you just start plugging in numbers. Like show us your thought process, because I think that's super important. That definitely helped me. Um, and the last thing is you're interviewing for Microsoft. So be very Microsoft specific in why you want to work here and 
What products do you love? What products do you not like? And what are your ideas for how you would improve them? I think that's a really common interview question too. And then the biggest thing I would say is have a really strong why Microsoft. There are so many reasons to love Microsoft and to want to work at Microsoft. Like I know everybody has their own. Make sure that you have a, a clear way of presenting that to the interviewer um, because I think that'll definitely stick with them. And some other little helpful hints for you. Um, our culture is really, really strong and we have a couple things that we really emphasize. So if you could take maybe some of these words and, and think about what that means to you and then communicate that to the interviewer, that would be super helpful. The first thing is we look at a growth mindset. The fact that you're willing to, to learn and grow um, rather than think that you know it all. Um, and I think that definitely helped me a lot, especially being a new hire, just absorbing and willing to learn everything from everybody. Super helpful. The other thing I'd say is empathy. Um, this is something that our CEO has stressed a ton, making sure that we can really understand what our customer is looking for and what we, how we can understand how our own employees are feeling and how they're doing. Just think kind of putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and thinking that way. And the last thing is customer obsession. We design products for our customers and what our customers want. So if you can stress that you're designing something because it's a it's a need, that's super helpful. But yeah, that's what I have for my interview tips and feel free to post some questions in the chat as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Srinu. Great perspective from someone who just started, you know, within the past six months. You know, obviously we've all been working through a pandemic and, you know, we offer that strong culture and that opportunity for you to dive right in, offer, you know, a really strong ramp up, you know, to really help you uh, understand what's going on as a new hire transitioning from university. So great perspective, great insight. Uh, thank you, Srinu. We're going to uh, toss it over to Lisbeth and she's going to talk to you more about what it's like to be a business program manager at Microsoft. Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, well, my journey with Microsoft, it has been for a while. I have been working in Microsoft during the last five years and a half. So in this PM role, uh, it was just the last two years. So I'm really interested in to, to learning a lot about all of this process related with um, relocation and immigration. I work for change and employment team. So my focus as program manager is connected with different regions across the world. So we have different service centers for those who are familiar with HR services. I'm part of this organization and we try to build and structure process around the specific process of immigration and global mobility. So one day in my life is starting with early calls for the different time zones. Um, I'm connecting with people that work um, in Shanghai, in Chennai, Prague, in Mexico. So we review different process and steps to find inefficiencies and how can we think, how can we do things differently? Um, and also I have a dog, so I just, I uh, have chance during breaks to have some small walks with her. Her name is Kelly. You will see on the next slide some picture of her. And my purpose at Microsoft definitely is seeking opportunities. Uh, we are really a great company who are changing and looking to see what is best for our employees and what is best for the community. So I Microsoft, if if I have learned something, it's definitely is how this um, world is very dynamic and how our processes in our tools are moving really in a fast um, uh, level of environment where you see a lot of changes um, happening. So you learn every day uh, new things and also you are able to connect with people from different frameworks that can bring like new perspective and new idea to make things differently. Um, about the fun fact about me, I like outdoors and hiking. Um, I have been living just in Seattle during the last two years, so I'm quite new for snowboarding. So I put like I am trying, still on learning process, even if sometimes it's painful for me. <laughs> so moving to the next slide, I just try, I'm super visual, so you will see a lot of pictures. I try just to put together some idea of what has been my journey, not only in Microsoft, but prior Microsoft. I have more than 10 years working 
in HR and prior Microsoft, I was in other companies, so I just wanted to highlight some of the learnings that I have. Um, again, my journey is quite different because my role as PM was just the last two years, but I could say that from every single experience and every role in company that I have, I think that has contributed a lot to have this perspective. And I put also some three learnings or tips that I find could be interesting for you guys. So um, I'm Mexican and I'm from a city um, in Mexico City that is called Puebla. I'm from a small town. So the pictures that you will see there on the screen on the left um, is how it looks like my town. Also, that was a picture of my dog, um, that her name is Kelly, uh, my husband, uh, Corbin, and my father and some of my friends there. So I really like to spend time as much as possible um, with my family, but with this new environment, I think all of this is more like virtual. I like to dance and I, I think definitely for me, one of the drivers is, is how can you make the difference in, in people? So. I put just this quote of Michelle Obama, which is definitely part of the mission and the learning that I have. And on my journey um, as HR professional, I think um, from the different companies that I have worked for, I started in 2009. I worked for IBM um, in international assigning representative. That role was regional. I was focused to handle the process for, um, for people that move within that region. So I think I learned a lot of policies and structure. Then I, I moved to work in Nissan and I think it was a lot of planning and follow up um, was one of the key skills. Or then in Bombardier, which is the aerospace Canadian company. So I have the opportunity to learn more about like metrics and operations and some structures of way of working. And in Microsoft, my prior role to this current role as business program manager, it was like an immigration lead for America's region. I think definitely the culture of growth mindset in keep open really your eyes to new possibilities of how can you do things differently, even if, if it's a process or a project that you already review, all of the new perspective and the people that join uh, Microsoft they are really talented people and can bring opportunities to do things differently. So for the learning tips that I could say on this experience for the uh, business program manager role is have this flexibility and this structure to think at, at least in plan B um, because these projects are for sure uh, with a lot of dependencies. So um, now, now you will see um, in Microsoft, more in, in US incorporated, like uh, you have timelines that are more than a year sometimes. And if something changes, you need to make some adjustments to make sure that you have options to accomplish the target or have some uh, ideas of how can you structure this, um, this process or this thing to make it align to the plan. The second point is the networking. I need to recognize this is an opportunity area for me. I, I, I consider myself like an introvert, so it's not something that I do it naturally, but definitely every every call, every meeting that you have with other people, um, you really need to be interested and, and really open to engage with them because you never know if it's a person who you will have an interaction in the future and that will something that will help to bring you more perspective about what you are doing and also definitely um, keeping aware that there are a lot of talented people here. And that tier one is really engaged in each conversation like now that we are virtual, like we are trying to use more our cameras, at least on my team and making sure to take notes like sometimes we get distracted um, in terms of multitasking, but I just find in, in every conversation like there are some insights or things that you can add up as a learnings for the current role or the job that you are doing. So I think that is for me. Perfect. Thank you, Elizabeth. 
And uh, we are going to toss it over to Tosin. So we're going moving back over to the technical PM side. Take it away, Tosin. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tosin Dufadeju. I'm a PM on the Identity CXP team. And that is Identity Customer Success, actually. So what we do is we help Microsoft's top customers to address all um, identity and access management related issues. Um, a day in my life, before I go back to my background, a day in my life typically it would involve speaking with these customers, speaking with those who attend to these um, topics on the customer end. I drive deployment, so I'm speaking with them about Azure AD features, which is the cloud centric uh, way of looking at Azure AD itself. And then we work, and it would also involve me working on certain on release features because being on the product side, I get to see this and use this before they're available to the public. I do a bunch of testing and then I create content around those things to make sure it's user friendly when the public gets it. And also with, through my interactions with customers, one thing I want to do is figure out how our customers use these tools and I can also take feedback into things as, as to um, what we go build next. Um, when it comes to my purpose at Microsoft, I did this last night and I said my purpose is actually to receive from the abundance around me and then give graciously to others. And that's because being around here, you have the abund abundance of knowledge, connections and all that. As much as I absorb that for myself, one thing I try to do is make sure that I'm giving some value to everybody I interact with. And that could come um, through mentoring other people that could come through um, helping our teammates and then also helping our customers. Now, uh, the fun fact I put in here I thought was appropriate for this conversation because um, my journey to Microsoft actually started because I responded to a tweet. So someone had uh, put something on Twitter one time about, um, do you want to know what it's like to be a PM at Microsoft? And I'd responded with, hey, yes, yeah, sure, can we get to talk? And that was the beginning of it. So after that, it was an invitation for one conversation. And then um, I got invited to speak with some Microsoft folks that were in a conference a couple of cities away from where I lived. And that was how I kind of like got into the process and went through interviews and all that. So a little background about myself. I am I am Nigerian and so I'm Nigerian and degrees. I have a computer science degree, but I also have a business and an analytics degree. I did not go through the typical um, routes of Microsoft. I did not have an internship and this was also was in my first role. So for me, I had to, um, I had internships with one of the airlines. I also had another internship with a manufacturing company where I ended up working for full time and I was a business analyst at that point. I did that for a while, but then I always wanted to move to the cloud space and there were three big companies I could go to. And for me, Microsoft was the one I really wanted in the cloud space. So I tried a few times to get those opportunities and that didn't come that didn't come through until um, and what, what, when that thing come through, what I did was I went back and just tried to prepare myself for those opportunities like, OK, if I was going to Microsoft, what would I need? So what I did was I took a few certifications in the cloud space to kind of just get me ready and prepare me for the opportunity. And then when um, I got that, when I got that call to come in, it was one of the things I presented to say, hey, I want to move to the cloud right now. I'm a business analyst. I want to move to work on the cloud. I probably don't have the qualifications for that or the experience for that right now, but then I've done this and this and this, and that's how I kind of pitched myself for it. Um, another thing to mention is I went to UT Dallas. So um, I think one of the questions I'd seen previously was, oh, are there schools you want to go to? And no, um, there really is no degree requirement that it has to be a specific degree. Neither is there a school requirement. I went to University of Texas at Dallas and um, all you need is just all you need is the opportunity to pitch yourself and pitch yourself appropriately and show that you're prepared for the opportunity in which you're seeking. Um, another thing about my journey is. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out is, like I mentioned, mine was through a tweet. I see people ask, how do you get these opportunities? Sometimes you just need to pay attention to people around you. So know what conferences are going on in your area, know what meetups are going on in your area. Now we have um, most things done virtually, so I know there are programs such as this, but then there are also um, some for HBCUs, and um, some are just professionals who actually just go out and seek opportunities to speak with other people. Um, another popular one I've seen recently is Clubhouse for the people who have moved onto the app. You have uh, Microsoft employees that will actually share opportunities when they find those. So you want to just pay attention to what's around you and when you see those kind of pictures of for those. 
Um, I spoke about what it's like to uh, a day in my life, so I'll, I'll skip that this time. I think one thing I want to mention is a few tips to be successful at this role. One, like I said, internships are not the only way, so if you don't get an internship and you're graduating, then what you want to do is get ready for the next one. So if you miss the internships, you can come in as a full time. I, if you miss the college recruitment, then you can come in right after that. There's no boundary to when you have to come in. Another thing is please don't disqualify yourself. Don't uh, there's no degree requirements. So uh, you've seen examples of people who've moved from like film and worked in tech and you've seen people who've done design, but then now they um, code or there is no um, there is no straight path. I've seen someone who started in gaming and is a leader in my in my department right now. So you want to just um, put your best foot forward at every point and just be able to articulate what exactly you want and what exactly you have you've done in your past that aligns with what you're looking for. Another thing is please come with the attitude to learn like when you have interviews or when you interact with anybody from Microsoft, just show them you're willing to learn. Um, and the reason why that's important is being at Microsoft and being with um, the company that makes most of these things, a lot of things you work on will be new. And so you don't uh, don't you don't have to prove that you know it all. You have to just prove that you're interested and passionate about the subject and you're willing to learn. That's one thing that kind of allows people to look at you differently and give you those opportunities. Then um, also, while you wait, whether you're in school or whether you're seeking other opportunities while you wait for Microsoft, just go work on transferable skills. Think about what area of Microsoft you want to work on and then um, try to identify what skills you need to build, what experiences you need to have, because the opportunities will come if you keep pushing, but then you want to make sure that when that happens, you are ready for it. And then um, finally, there was a question about certificates, like what certificates do you need? Um, with Microsoft, we welcome diverse experiences, and so there is you don't need to have all the Microsoft certifications to work with Microsoft. What you just need to do is, um, like I said, prepare yourself in a way that you can pitch it. So for me, I had one of the other cloud vendor certificates at the time when I joined Microsoft, and that was what I mentioned in my interview to say, hey, I've been able to learn ABC, and this is a good app from ABC, but then if I was able to do that successfully, then I probably can learn this technology as well. And that was one of the things that led to the opportunity. So um, there is no certain certificate you must have. We're pretty open. It's more about the person and how well you pitch yourself when you get the opportunity. So again, I will uh, pass it on so we don't take too much time and I'll answer any questions you have at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Tosin. We are going to toss it over to Diego. Go ahead and take it away when you're ready, Diego. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much and uh, welcome everyone. My name is Diego Granados and I'm currently a, prog a program manager here at Microsoft for AI and machine learning. And a little bit about myself, I am I was an international student at Duke University to do my MBA. I'm originally from Mexico, Mexico City, so I, I understand for many of those, those of you who are internationals as well. Um, hopefully this is a signal that Microsoft not only welcomes internationals like myself, um, but is also, and, and Lisbeth, who, whom you, you heard from earlier, but it's also uh, you know, a great place to work. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a really great journey to be here. So what do I do? I'm a PM for AI machine learning. I worked in this team where we create machine learning models for other Microsoft products within the B2B space. That is the Dynamics umbrella, customer insights. And so it's a really interesting uh, space for me to start learning about uh, machine learning models. I did not have the experience on machine learning before coming into Microsoft. And so how did I do it? I was a PM before working in San Jose, California, and I started to be interested in this space. And so I started to do some research, study, take some courses. I actually applied to an online degree to get more experience on machine learning. And by the time that I was in the interview, I was able to talk about how I was learning, but my PM skills were transferable. And so it was just a matter of ramping up in this space. And so that's how I, I was fortunate enough to end up in, in this uh, in this new role. And I've been here for a year and a half, and it's been a great journey to get into Microsoft. Um, day in the life, it's, um, 
PM, like you would expect, it depends, and it's a, a typical answer from a PM. But essentially, I spend a lot of my time working with my data science and engineering team to see how we can improve our models, what the new features or the new models that are coming up. I also talk to both internal and external customers to understand what are the requirements, what are their needs, what are the new models that we are going to come up with that are going to surface in different Microsoft products. And of course, I also spend some time with marketing and design and content to just make sure that everything is tight and ready to uh, deliver these products or these models to our customers. At Microsoft, I do see myself learning about different technologies, but also uh, launching you know, amazing products. And as you've heard from some of the other speakers before me, there's just so many things that you can try at Microsoft and so many teams that it's just an amazing place where you can test out different things. You can try out different teams in, in your career. For me, it's been a year and a half, but who knows, you know, in two years, I could be in another team trying something different. And I just think it's something really, really cool about this company. Fun fact for me, during this whole COVID situation, I actually started a YouTube channel to help others learn more about product management. You can find me as PM Diego Granados. And I started this because last year, I found an organization who was helping other PMs who were losing their jobs because of COVID. And PMs like myself will help them with the resume and prepping for interviews and, and all the basic things. And so at some point, it was just too much to keep having this one on ones with, with people. And so I decided to start with one video and if people liked it, I will do another video. And so far I find myself doing videos every week and it's been a fun, fun journey. So feel free to check it out and, and you know, um, ask any questions that you have. I want to focus on two particular things right now. Uh, based on some of the comments that I've seen and being in your shoes a, a few years ago, the number one advice that I would give to everyone is stop obsessing over your resume. We've all been there. We've all been and spent 20 hours in our resume and we fine tune it to the point where everybody is just seeing the same resume over and over again. Put it into a place where you feel comfortable about it. You have all the keywords, you know, it's tailored towards the PM role and then stop focusing on your resume. What you should do instead is start focusing on projects and products. And maybe you're a student, maybe you are doing your MBA, maybe you are you have your job. Think of a, think of a side project, pick something, whatever you want, whether it's an application, whether it's uh, you know something that you find on LinkedIn, something that you find on, on Product Hunt, but pick something and improve it the way a PM would. Interview customers, do service, take that data, improve it, put a deck together and post it online. Get the feedback. If you can, launch it. If you know how to code, that's awesome. And if not, you don't need to code anything. You just need to show the journey to think as a PM. And all of that is going to help you as a portfolio. And what you're going to do with that is, as you're talking to recruiters, as you're talking to PMs, as you're doing your networking, or even during the interviews, you can showcase and say, hey, here's a project that I built because I, I can show that even though I'm a student or you know I do something that might look slightly non-traditional to the PM path, I can think as a PM and here's a proof to that. And so uh, start, stop thinking about your resume and I'll start thinking about building projects, building products. And like I said, you don't need to code, you don't need to launch anything. This is more about the thought, the, the think through process of this. The other thing that I want to focus on is preparing for your interviews. This is something that yes, one part of it is, hey, I want to get into the process. I want to get my resume reviewed. But what happens after you get that initial very exciting call that says, hey, we want to interview you. Welcome to the first step to get into Microsoft. And where I see a lot of people fail, and I've interviewed in the past a lot of PMs, I also interview a lot of product managers um, in, in here at Microsoft, and one of the biggest things that I see is that people don't prepare enough for an interview. And I don't mean that you have to be an expert in Microsoft products or in a specific technology, but it's rather think it from the PM perspective. What, what we are looking for as, as we go through these interviews is the communication piece has to be um, in, in a great shape and form. And what I mean by that is I see a lot of candidates who uh, don't prepare by practicing and practicing and practicing. So when they come to the interview and you ask them a question like, how would you improve your favorite Microsoft product? They end up um, in, in this very convoluted answer that ends up confusing the interviewer and the interviewee. And so Communication is one thing that you should focus on. And the best way to do that is just practice and practice and practice. And there's tons of people on LinkedIn and in so many PM channels that you can practice with. That, that's something that I recommend. Another thing that I recommend is really think of why you want to join Microsoft. You have no idea how many times we hear things like, I want to join Microsoft because it's great. 
but why is it great to you? We want to hear that that you know you're really passionate about being a PM, about being at Microsoft, about doing this type of job. And so really think through why do you want to be be part of this organization because it's going to shine through your interviews. And then the last tip that I have for you is that uh, make sure that as you are going through the process, just keep networking. Uh, right now you're you're listening to us, but there are so many amazing Microsoft employees that go on LinkedIn, find um, you know more more PMs if you want to follow the PM track, and just try to set coffee chats with them. And you will hear so many amazing stories. You will learn from so many of them that by the time you get into an interview, if you did your practice for product management interviews, if you did your networking, you'll see that it's going to be so much easier. You'll be so much relaxed. And so with that in mind, like I said, um, feel free to check out my YouTube channel for more on PM advice. And uh, thank you so much, Rashard, and I'll, I'll give it back to you. Perfect. Thank you, Diego. Uh, we're going to move along and have Needy join the conversation. Take it away. Hey folks, can you hear me? Yep. Awesome, sorry, I think I got disconnected um, over there, but thank you so much for having me. And welcome everybody, my name is Nidhi. Uh, I'm a program manager in OneDrive and SharePoint. I work on the industry leading collaboration tool that integrates into Hub for Teamwork at work, home, and school. Uh, quickly getting into day in a life, uh, I am feature PM. I work on the SharePoint infrastructure side to improve the reliability and security and the scale as well. And uh, just to get a bit more about me, I am a customer champion. So I work with a lot of customers, try to understand their needs. How do we translate that into our service and the features that we can build for them? I am uh, also in DNI champion, so I um, uh, we have meetings, we have groups, you know, that champion DNI culture values, which we can talk a bit uh, later on. And then uh, last year, I was a uh, giving uh, champion driver. Uh, I don't know if folks know uh, in Microsoft, giving is really in our DNA. Uh, we believe in giving back to our society, giving back to everybody on the planet, and you know, help them make better. So. Uh, and the last thing is uh, I'm also a patent lead, so I work uh, with other folks on patenting some of our innovative ideas here at Microsoft and get them under the Microsoft patent uh, program. So that's what I do. My purpose at Microsoft uh, is um, first is first and foremost is to help people and organizations around the world achieve more and also grow myself by uh, absorbing all the information and knowledge that we have, as you may have heard from other folks before me. You know, there are lots of smart people. There's lots of amazing people that we can learn from, from, you know, diverse backgrounds. It's really an awesome opportunity and place to be at. A fun fact about me is uh, Microsoft is the only job. Uh, you know, this is the only job I've been at uh, after I passed, uh, did my grad at uh, upstate New York in a school called as RIT. And I've been here 11 years. I never thought I'd be here for that long, but you know, it's been an amazing journey to be here. And I am often on um, interview loops for uh, university hires and industry hires. So I thought, you know, I would share some of the tips and some of you know the observations that I've had on my journey on, um, on, on the right so far. So if you could uh, move on to the next slide would be awesome. Okay, sorry, I guess there was a delay. So a couple, couple useful skills for program managers or you know, folks who aspire to be program managers is uh, think in terms of bringing clarity, you know, approach a problem and think about how can I be more clear? How can I ask more questions to bring more clarity? The next one is generate energy, which is uh, how can I you know, make more folks excited about this? How can I rally folks to solve this problem? So you know, have that excitement, have that positive attitude. And the third one is, you know, uh, deliver success, which is more on execution because, you know, it's yes, you know, we can bring clarity, we can generate energy, but it's really, really important to deliver it to, you know, go to the last mile. So that's really important. And a couple things on the interview guidance side without, you know, going through the exhaustive list is just bring your authentic self. When we are interviewing, we want to meet the real you. We want you to see how do you think outside the box, right? Don't stress too much. Don't think too much. Just bring your authentic self. Think outside the box do focus a lot on articulating a solution and why did you come up with that? You know, we want to really hear your thought process. We really want to understand that. Why did you come up with something? We understand that, you know, um, 
folks who are just graduating, you know, they don't have a lot of you know, experience, industry experience, which is perfectly fine. What we want to really understand is you demonstrating a deep passion and willingness to learn, willingness to listen, willingness to, you know, think outside the box, sky's the limit, really. And really be customer focused. Always ask that, why am I building this? Who will benefit from this? What are the other solutions out there that I can learn from? So, you know, don't stress too much. Uh, don't feel overwhelmed at all. Relax and uh, and enjoy. Really, you know, enjoy the experience. Enjoy the experience talking to somebody in Microsoft and learning from them. So uh, that's, I guess, my biggest um, takeaway over there. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, recruiting team, for having this awesome session, uh, you know, post some questions and you know we'll be happy to answer them at the end. Perfect, thank you Nidhi. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into the Q&A portion and I would like to start with you Nidhi. There's a, a question here and uh, really to put it simply we just want it want you to summarize after we have talked through you know a day in the life, different journeys, some of the um, useful skills that you can develop to prepare yourself for the uh, the PM role. Could you summarize very succinctly um, in your own words. Um, I just lost a question here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let me scroll back up here. Um, essentially, just what makes a great PM in your eyes? I know you, as you mentioned, um, you're involved in interviews for uh, university candidates as well as, as, yeah, as well as experienced candidates, and you do first round and final round interviews. So just in your mind, in your words, uh, what makes a great PM? Yeah, that's uh, that's actually a wonderful question. That's an awesome question. I would actually say two things. Be very customer focused. As program managers, we are proxy for our customers. We bring their problems, we talk about their problems, and we are here to you know, build solutions, find solution to their problems. So be very customer focused. And when I say customer, they don't always have to be external customers. Some of the program manager roles, we work towards customers and our customers are just, you know, all of the engineers here at Microsoft. So be very customer focused, bring that, bring that customer value, you know, think almost as if you are the customer. So that's one thing I would say. And the other one I would really say is um, willingness to learn. I know, you know, it sound, sounds cliche, but really be willingness to learn. And that goes hand in hand with having a growth mindset. Be open to learning ideas, you know, be open to hearing other people's thoughts and be open to iterate on the th iterate on other people's thoughts and feedbacks and mature it along the way. So I would, you know, really focus on those two things if I were to say what really makes, you know, a great PM. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and Diego, if you're still on, I have one question for you before you drop. Um, the question is, how do PMs at Microsoft keep in mind accessibility and diversity of users while being responsible for products? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great question. And I think there are two parts to it. One is, as you many of you probably have seen, Microsoft is very conscious about uh, our products being accessible, right? And and we really take care of that. We actually, there. I'm fairly new to Microsoft. And one of the things that I learned very fast was that all of our products have to go through some compliance to make sure that they are accessible. And so that's one aspect to it. And then the other aspect that is a little bit more closely related to my day-to-day -day job. As I mentioned, I work in, in machine learning. And so we always have to keep in mind how do we, uh, my users and most of Microsoft users are not gonna be uh, super technical, or in that case, they're not gonna be the scientists, they're not gonna be, um, you know, engineers, they're going to be data analysts. And so how do we make sure that our products, our solutions cater a wider range of users and not just those that are technical? And so, like I said before, we do have a process for accessibility and, and it's very, very tight, very strict, and that's what makes our products great. And on the other hand, it's also on the PM team. How do we make our products accessible to a wider range of users for that specific target that we're building our products for? Perfect. Thank you so much, Diego. Uh, I'm going to kick it over to Srinu. I have a really great question for you. So you mentioned that as you were thinking through your career options and your major and all that good stuff that, you know, tech was not really your focus, but here you are at Microsoft six months in to a technical PM role. So the question is, where do you see your, yeah, where do you see your career progressing as a PM in the next five years or even 10 years? That's a really good question. Um, it's something that I've been thinking through a lot recently, especially given COVID and just the amount, the, the way the industry is changing. I think 
the next five years are really, really crucial for just learning and, and growing. Um, I think the PM role is so complex, like you can specialize in in developing features or you could specialize specialize in helping onboard customers to your product. I think there's so many different avenues you can go with the role. So I guess I'm trying to figure out where my place in that is. And I think what I've learned is I really like designing products um, and I love playing around with UI and, and design. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm focusing right now. Um, 10 years, it's a great question. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, wow. I will definitely still be a PM. I plan on staying in the PM role for forever, probably. Um, I've seen at Microsoft, some people have been PMs for 25 years. It's common to see that, so it's pretty cool. Um, I think I would bounce around um, the different teams that we have here. I think, depend, like right now I'm on Intune, I love it because it's it's, a very cool technical product. I'm learning so much about like the back end, um, but I think maybe transitioning to a more end user facing um, product would be super cool. And then kind of picking from there, whether I like enterprise software or I liked building something like PowerPoint for our end users, um, just figuring out kind of where my place is in that is, yeah, I really, I really don't have a specific like bam, 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 this is where I'm going to go. I feel like my whole life was like that, where I planned everything out, and now I'm kind of just like, whoa, I'm in this huge, amazing company. There's so much to learn. Like, the possibilities are really endless. Absolutely. Well said. Ashart, sorry, I, I wanted to add something over there is, you know, um, there, are, there are folks, you know, who continue on to, you know, being just program managers throughout their life. But it's okay to try the life at Microsoft, but it's okay to also switch disciplines. Uh, I was a developer before, and then I switched to a program manager. So uh, folks, you know, who do want to change disciplines, it's, I thought I thought I saw a question somewhere. It's okay to you know, change discipline. There is lots of flexibility. So it's not like, you know, you have to, if you join as a program manager, you will continue be a program manager. So definitely, you know, be open. We're definitely very open and flexible to that as well. Thank you, Needy. And as a follow up question, just can you tell us a little bit more about like what was your motivation behind um, switching from the dev role over to PM and, and how did you prepare yourself? Yeah, that's actually a very awesome question. So I was a developer. I've been at Microsoft for uh, 11 years now. I was a developer for the first three years and um, as a part of you know working, I used to work with a lot of program managers, design, um, life side team. And uh, the more and more I you know worked with them, I got really drawn to uh, you know understanding. I I would I wanted to spend a lot of time on understanding the problem, on being the customer advocate, to speak to customers, understanding their complex problems, finding a solution, rallying people around to you know solve that problem. And that's where you know I got slowly just um, more pivoted towards it and. I had some really awesome mentors and sponsors, which by the way at Microsoft, you know, we have very strong mentoring and sponsor uh, program. So one of my mentors said that, hey, do you, why don't you just want to try it out? So I gave that a thought and, you know, I tried it out for like a couple months with, of course, speaking to my managers and my leadership team. They were very, very supportive of it. And, you know, once I was trying it out and, you know, giving that a shot, I begin to like it. I was, you know, successful. I was getting a lot of feedback from other folks. I was trying, I was asking them, hey, how do you think I'm doing? But do you think you know I would be a good PM? What are your thoughts? Just to you know get that outside in perspective. And at some point, I got really comfortable. I just you know switched. And um, in terms of what did I prepare for? Um, like I like I was mentioning at my when I was talking about my slide, uh, it's a lot of you know being focused on um, drinking clarity, delivering success, and you know uh, generating energy. That's what I really you know prepared on, and um, I really really leveraged my support team over here, a lot of my mentors who helped me uh, make a switch and you know really be successful. So I give you know full kudos and support to you know all my to my team that helped me, and it's not just my team who I you know report into, but the the broader the broad organization and my leadership team as well. So um, I've been very fortunate uh, to make a switch and be really successful at it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Needy. And thank you to all of the presenters. You guys were fantastic. And again, thank you to the audience for joining. Uh, we're going to drop here pretty soon to be respectful of uh, the presenters' time. Um, I want to thank you again for joining today. Uh, hopefully, you you know had some great takeaways from this conversation. You learned about what it means to be a 
a PM here at Microsoft, what a day in the life is. Um, we had someone talk about transition from university to full time. Um, had someone cover the business program manager role. So hopefully you guys learned a lot today. You have a better understanding of what our culture is like and again, what the PM role is here at Microsoft. So um, last time, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining. It was a pleasure and uh, have a good afternoon, a good evening, wherever you are. Take care.